zero one course or those who have joined most of them are in the first year of the their courses uh, in, in in cardiology OPD, when you you come across a patient and what you see that you, after writing a prescription after writing a prescription most often the time that patient ask you doctor kya khaye and and if you ask them what are you eating now aap kya khate ho bhi bolo doctor sahab humko to ghar pe sirf lauki aur phulka milta hai aajkal that is the situation they do, uh, the, the the promotion by some baba that lauki is so good that they they are not getting a, uh, any 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 diet diet which is almost zero in the fat the fat is so much uh, is treated like a killer in our cardiac patient so there are lots of myths and fancy about the fat about the energy so what we are going to discuss is the diet for prevention of cvd it's all for the primary prevention for the secondary prevention as well as i'm not going for the tertiary prevention but it's uh, what we are discussing is for prevention and what should the ideal uh, diet for the patient of cardiovascular disease so what do you mean by the cardiovascular disease that is a cvd cvd in is is the group of disorder of the heart and blood vessels which includes uh, coronary artery disease which is the leading cause of uh, mortality in worldwide as well as in india and followed by stroke which is another leading cause of death and morbidity it also includes rheumatic heart disease congenital heart disease peripheral vascular disease and arrhythmias and all of those things but important to note the coronary artery disease peripheral artery disease and stroke they have all common etiology that is the atherosclerosis and what we have learned that uh, in 2015 almost 422 million uh, patients were suffering from this cardiovascular disease and then uh, it was decided in 2015 the world health assembly they have decided the non communicable disease especially the cvd should be reduced by 25% by 2025 so and when we see that what is the most important cause of death apart from uh, in india what we see is that in 2007 and to compare to the 2017 ischemic heart disease remained the number one cause if you see that apart from the ischemic heart disease another important cause of cardiovascular disease is stroke has risen his uh, this ladder and has reached to number 3 but if you see that the percentage increase the percentage increase almost 50% the ischemic heart disease and diabetes which is also linked to the diet has also increased more than 52 53% so everything uh, somehow it is related to the diet So if you see that what are the risk factors for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or cerebrovascular disease or whatever the cardiovascular disease whatever you call it, so there could be a modifiable risk factor or there could be a non-modifiable risk factor. Family history, age, gender, ethnicity are considered non-modifiable because you can't change your age, you can't change your gender, ethnicity you can't change. We know that Indian have almost two to three times more chances of development of coronary artery disease. Family history you can't change. other aspect uh, which is factor they can be grouped as the behavioral environmental or biological biological risk factor if you see that the high blood pressure diabetes mellitus dyslipidemia and central obesity these are the biological risk factor and you see that diet plays an important role in management as well as the prevention of these important risk factor apart from this there is a behavioral risk factor tobacco and diet itself is a important behavioral risk factor which may lead to atherosclerotic cvd physical inactivity stress and sleep disorder they are all uh, now the established behavioral risk factor and what we are frequently ignored contributor is the childhood obesity which is an important issue regarding the diet if you see that the global burden of disease what is causing the uh disease burden globally in 2017 the number one cause was the malnutrition and second important cause was the dietary in risk dietary intake and this dietary intake or dietary risk 
was majority of contributed by the cardiovascular disease. So what are the issues regarding the diet and cardiovascular disease? Is it the total energy intake? Is it related to the fat intake? And if the fat and what is what type of fat and it is a quality or it is a quantity? Is it carbohydrate? And what is the role of my micronutrient, salt, uh, and the cardiovascular disease? And last, uh, alcohol. What is the uh, what is the role of alcohol? Is it uh, helpful? Is it harmful? We'll we'll see in uh, next few slides. Regarding the fats, we what we know that uh, there are three types of fat. A saturated fat when we don't have any 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 uh, carbon double bond bonds and when we have only one carbon double uh, double bonds we have it is known as monounsaturated fat and we have more than one it is known as polyunsaturated fat that is the simplest classification if we see the source of these fats saturated fat is mostly is a is an animal source is an animal fats butter or lard it is a majority of sources of saturated fat. And the unsaturated fat can be grouped into the monounsaturated fat. This omega-9 fatty acid is the, the classical source is the olive oil, avocado, peanuts, or almond oil. Now, omega-6, we see that the mustard oil is very rich in the omega-6 fatty acid. And the sesame, peanut, and sunflower, safflower, corn flour, whatever you, these are the types of refined oil. You, 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 you commonly known it is a refined oil. They are basically a source of omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, we must uh, remember the omega-3 fatty acids. There are three types of omega-3 fatty acids. Eco Ecosapentonic acid, which is uh, the, the source of is basically fatty fish or uh, shellfish. And the docosahexaenoic acid is a DHA, which is uh, the source is almost uh, fatty fish or fish. The LNA uh, is, is it, it can be found in the flax seed or rap seed or soybean or some part is some some it is also seen in the mustard oil. So important to note that the traditional Indian practice when we are using the different oil for the different types of the cooking and when we try to rotate the oil that is a good practice and it should be advised and should be promoted. Uh, regarding the what is earlier it was. It was thought that there's a bad diet, there is too much cholesterol or saturated fat that leads to the high blood cholesterol and that leads to atherosclerosis and subsequent the coronary artery disease. But nowadays, this theory is not now being challenged. Why it is so? Because multiple uh, meta analysis systemic review has shown it. What I have put only one slide that is analysis, which is published in 2014. What they have seen that the dietary, circulatory, or supplemental fatty acid uh, and their risk with the coronary disease, it was found that the saturated fat is not increasing any risk of uh, coronary disease. And the total monounsaturated fat is also not increasing the risk of coronary disease. If you see that long chain uh, omega-3 fatty acids, they were preventing the coronary disease. And most importantly, the ugly part was a trans fatty acid. Trans fatty acid was causing increase in cardiovascular disease up to the tune of 16%. So important to note in multiple meta-analysis, the saturated fat was not found to be in increasing the uh, incidence of cardiovascular disease. So another important 2017, it was a Lancet publication, the pure study, where almost 1.3 lakh individuals have recorded their validated food frequency questionnaire. And that challenges the current recommendation of limiting the total fat intake by 30% necessitated fat, less than 10% by AHA or, or, or ACC. What they have found that the, the, uh, the majority of these individuals were from the South, uh, South Asia, and it, it was found in the South Asia. South Asia includes India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal. What they have found that the uh, harmful impact of high carbohydrate. What they have found that the more than 60% energy, energy intake of by the carbohydrate was associated with the higher total mortality and non-cardiovascular disease mortality. And important to note, they have found that uh, the total fat intake was not reaching up to 30%. And that they also concluded that the higher fat intake 
including the saturated fat, had no association to major cardiovascular events, MI or cardiovascular disease mortality, especially in South Asia. So why there is inconsistency in the fat in the cardiometabolic risk relationship? Because all saturated fat are not seen. And there is a difference in the long chain fatty acid, medium chain fatty acid, event chain fatty acid, saturated fatty acid, and or chain fatty acid. And in the research has shown that the dairy products are protective. They have rich in the saturated fat, but they are protective because they contain or chain fatty acids. And then it is it has differential saturated fat has a differential effects on the on the LDL cholesterol and SDL cholesterol. SDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol. If you increase energy intake by more than 1% by saturated fat, you will have almost 15 per milligram per deciliter increase in the LDL cholesterol, but your HDL cholesterol will also rise by almost 5, per, 5 milligram per deciliter. And then this differential effect leads oh, to the great. change in the total cholesterol and total cholesterol SDL ratio, which is also an uh, important factor for development of atherosclerosis disease. Ultimately, what is important is the portion size, meaning by how much total fat content uh, is there in your 2, diet. 1, 5, 7, 8, 2, 5, 6, 5. So if you see that US dietary guideline and AS, ACC guideline, AHA, they, have, they, they have restricted the uh, saturated fat intake to less than 10% of the total calorie intake to reduce uh, cardiovascular disease. So uh, basically different saturated fat we have already discussed, they have different biological effects and which are further modified by the more food matrix. Uh, what is food matrix? We'll just have a few words on this and the carbohydrate content of the world. If you see that uh, the several food contents such as the whole fat dairy, or the dark chocolate, which is less in the sugar, unprocessed meat, they are not associated with the increased yeah. cardiovascular disease or diabetes risk. And there is no robust evidence that the current population-wide arbitrary upper limits of saturated fat consumption in the United States will prevent cardiovascular disease or reduce mortality because there is no evidence on the population-wide application of this 10% uh, reduction, reduction to the 10% of saturated fat intake. And the, for prevention, the fat composition is more important. But what we know that epidemiological, clinical, and the mechanistic studies that, that they have shown. So if you re, uh, replace the saturated fat, uh, saturated fat with the PUFA, the polyunsaturated fat, one percent change will lead to the reduction of two to three percent of coronary heart disease. And this. So the recommendation is that. You intake of saturated fat should be the whole fat, dairy, unprocessed uh, red meat, and dark chocolate. They are not increasing the cardiovascular disease or diabetes risk. Why it is, it is so because of the complex food matrix. They have high saturated fat content, but they, but they also have other nutrients. For example, they have protein, they have micronutrients, they have phospholipid, they have probiotic, they have high... Uh, level of, they, they are very rich source of the iron. They are very rich source of the B12. So based on these findings, so new recommendations should be laid for the, regarding the intake of the saturated fat. Regarding unsaturated fat recommendations, so MUFA uh, has a very favorable effect on the SDL cholesterol when they replace saturated fat or they re replace the carbohydrates. And PUFA lowers the LDL cholesterol level. So we should be replacing uh, saturated fat with the PUFA and MUFA that is recommended, but important to note when we are taking saturated fat in less than 10%, source uh, red meat is not contraindicated. You can have unprocessed red meat or you can have a dairy milk, dairy product. So, regarding the omega 3 fatty acid, the, the HA recommends that fatty uh, fish intake should be in, in, increased. Uh, this fatty fish, fish is not available in our 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 northern India population because it's it basically mostly it is a sea fish, such as a, a salmon, trout, herring, or sardines. And it also recommends that if you are not having fatty fish, then you can have a plant-derived omega-3 fatty acids such as a tofu, flaxseed, is walnut. They are very good source, and soybeans are very good source. 
and the, it has been seen that intake of one gram of EPA and DHA should be recommended. And the consumption it, it can be it can be uh, obtained by the oily fish uh, fish oil, but the 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 result with the fish oil consumption and the reduction in the cardiovascular disease it was never found. The oil uh, fish oil supplement was never uh, found to be pet uh, evidence based therapy. So in Indian context, the NIN and ICMR has said that the it, ratio should be is important. Ratio recommended is N6 and N3. It should be three to six is to one. So omega six versus omega three. It is recommendation is three to three to six is to one. And its source includes the fish and the some vegetable. Like for example, mustard oil is a is a it contains fair amount of the omega three fatty fatty acid. Rapeseed, flaxseed is a flaxseed is a very good source of omega-3 fatty acids. But important to note, we we don't have any clinical trial to document the benefit of these uh, methods of replacing these uh, using the mustard oil or flaxseed oil. Uh, no robust clinical uh, trial. Small, small studies, but uh, which we have a very small number and which have a, a surrogate endpoints. They are there, but no uh, no clinical driven uh, endpoints. What noted regarding the milk butter and ghee that is also an important uh, uh, aspect uh, where patient like to discuss sir ab ghee kha sakte hain ki nahi kha sakte deshi ghee kha sakte hain thoda sa le sakte hain ki nahi le sakte hain and most of the most of the our doctor friends usually say no you can't take any ghee so usually patient feel disheartened but i will like to discuss something about the milk butter and ghee so they are, you know that they are very rich source of the such high saturated fatty acid and monounsaturated fatty acid content, and <laughs> they also have a large amount of the protective substance, and they are a very good source of protein. And that you, you see that meta analysis has shown that milk intake, milk intake doesn't have any adverse event event effect on the cardiovascular outcome outcome. And even a few reports have shown that, that there is a benefit by the milk intake. They are very rich source of the all chain fatty acid, and these are the uh, these are beneficial fatty acids, and they are protective for the cardiovascular disease. And milk derivatives such as the yogurt, butter, milk are cardiovascular disease protective in India. But the butter and ghee is usually produced by the cream. And the mechanistic studies as well as epidemiological studies are not there, and it, these are required to clarify these issues. What we have one study, which is a, it is a, uh, a this is a Jaipur Heart Watch study. It's a, it's a cross-sectional study in the rural population, almost 2,000 uh, men. What they have studied that the, they have compared the. Uh, men who were consuming more than one kg ghee per month or more almost uh, 30 gram ghee per day versus those who are not uh, having less than this. But they have found that the, the men who were consuming ghee, they were having less number, uh, uh, less prevalence of the cardiovascular disease com compared to the uh, men who were consuming ghee and not uh, consuming ghee less than one kg uh, per month. And this odd ratio was almost, uh, it was almost five times, almost five times. In the multivariate analysis, regression analysis, it was found that ghee consumption was uh, protective in this group of the patient, this group of individual who were consuming more than one kg ghee per month. So regarding the recommendation of the ghee consumption, uh, we know that the ghee is a uh, good source of the saturated fatty acid. Almost 60 to 65% is saturated fatty and rest as a mono and saturated fat. And, <laughs> and this composition varies from the source of milk and the ghee extraction process, uh, depending on the on the on, on the, the source, whether it's a buffalo milk or whether it's a cow milk, it's a goat milk, depends on the source. Uh, the, this uh, percentage of saturated fat also changes. So important to note that uh, we should be limiting the total saturated fat intake to less than 10%, but Physically active individual can be can be advised to can take a ghee up to to the tune of ten to twenty gram per day, and it is not recommended in sedentary individuals, which we doctor are mostly sedentary individuals. The important aspect about the fat is the ugly part is the trans fatty acids. 
the majority of the source of the trans fatty acids is the deep dry fried fast food bakery product packet snacks and margarine and crackers and which is very very uh, uh, tasty uh, uh, food products and reusing refined oil is a, they increase the trans fats and the reuse of the refined oil should be discouraged even in and we see that it is most atherogenic among all the fatty acid if you see that the 2% increase in the energy take by the trans fatty acid it is associated with almost 23% increase in the incidence of coronary heart disease so 2% increase in energy intake by the trans fatty acid will lead to the increase of the 23% of coronary heart disease the nurses health study had in the 14 years of follow up what they have found that the percentage change of energy by the trans fatty acid they have very vertical line this almost very vertical line of increase in the percentage of the incidence of the coronary heart disease so it's it's very dangerous to have uh, uh, this trans fatty acids and what is the source source is the commonest is vanaspati ghee which is the hydrogenated oil and fats uh, which is nowadays uh, less people are using but but in in rural population it is still being used and then regular household food fried good food uh, when they whenever you are using a reuse of oil that is producing the trans fatty acid if you, you are very fond of the samosa when you see that the same oil is being used from the morning to the evening the the the, the halwa is uh, frying that samosa from morning to evening the same same level of oil so this is a high uh, reuse of the oil and that is a very high high source of the trans fatty acids indian fast food bhatura aloo tikki samosa vada noodles western junk food burgers pizza donuts convenience food such as the ready to eat food they have very high uh, level of the trans fatty acid and we see that the food labeling is also misleading if you see that this is it, it's a food label of the cookies if you see that they have sent the zero trans fat fat in this uh, label but if you see that carefully they have written the partially hydrogenated vegetable oil and hydrated oils but this is thing but the trans fatty acid so you have to see that what is the food level what is carefully about the food level whether it is they have what they do that they disguise the the uh, evidence of the trans fatty acids if you see that fatty acid composition of the commonly used cooking meal cooking oils that we see that the flax seed is the very rich source of omega 3 fatty acids other is the canola oil which is also a very good source of the omega 3 fatty acids coconut oil is mostly a saturated fat <coughs> if you see then mustard oil mustard oil contains almost 6% the omega 3 fatty acid which is alna and 15% of the omega 6 fatty acid and it is almost 12% saturated fat and most of them is monounsaturated fat so mustard oil is not bad at all so uh, so regarding the carbohydrate and cardiovascular disease and uh, it is the literature is little conflicting what we have seen that high carbohydrate reduces the hdl cholesterol level and uh, it all increases the triglyceride level and after the increasing triglyceride level the small dense ldl particles are increased and which is a very uh, you can say that the very uh, very very atherogenic compared to the uh, uh, less dense ldl molecule and then high carbohydrate with the high glycemic index uh, they 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 increase uh they increase they increase the chances of coronary heart disease and then the nature of the carbohydrate is important in reduction to the reduction of the cardiovascular disease what is glycemic index we i'm not going to detail so just remember that which food with uh, with a high glycemic index are those which are rapidly digested absorbed and they they card cause marked reduction in the marked fluctuation in the blood sugar level low glycemic index meaning by they don't change blood glucose so rapidly regarding the we have already discussed that high carbohydrate decreases the hdl cholesterol which is a protective as uh, lipoprotein 
and it increases the small dense LDL and it increases the triglyceride. It is a combination of the metabolic syndrome. It is it is also known as the atherogenic uh, lipid profile. Atherogenic pro lipid profile is increased by the dietary carbohydrate, and that is one of the proposed mechanisms uh, which was uh, which was which was led to that there is increase in the increase uh, the chances of atherosclerosis coronary disease is much higher in the in the in the in that population because of the this dietary pattern because we most of the source of energy is from the carbohydrate regarding the sugars uh, obviously uh, we should reduce the consumption of the simple sugars energy dense nutrient poor food and beverages for example the methyl it is only the energy dense but less nutrient value uh, sweeteners i'm um, just uh, i will just the non nutritive uh, sweet, uh, sweeteners are safe and when they are consumed in the uh, acceptable daily intake levels they are recommended they can be taken and this is an important uh, the sugar sweetened beverage it has it was found if you uh, uh, the uh, one serving of uh, ssb can in, lead to the increase in the systolic blood pressure of 1.5 mm mercury it was is found in the cross sectional studies and in the premier study it was found if you decrease one serving of uh, ssb it is leads to reduction of almost 2 mm mercury of uh, systolic blood pressure so uh, this ssb should be reduced in intake what about the protein and Protein, uh, there is inverse association between the protein intake and the cardiovascular disease. And what is recommended is you should be re replacing the carbohydrate and saturated fat by protein. It has a beneficial effect on the cardiovascular risk factor. For example, it reduces the triglyceride, it reduces the LDL cholesterol, and it also reduces the systolic blood pressure. <coughs> Plant proteins, for example, the nuts, soya, pulses, legumes, and tuna rich in the allarginine improves the endothelial dysfunction, it is, which is a precursor of the atherosclerosis. And dairy protein appears to be beneficial. And uh, but obviously there is no studies on the on the event rate whether the replacing the this uh, SFA or carbohydrate by protein whether it leads to the reduction in the event rate reduction in the myocardial infarction or, or mortality, this has never been proven. Uh, regarding the vitamin intake, antioxidant and cardiovascular disease, uh, current evidence doesn't support any 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 supplement, uh, but the primary food source should be encouraged uh, regarding the uh, use of the antioxidant. This is a very important meta-analysis which has shown that the daily dairy consumption on the total cardiovascular disease the dairy consumption, if, if the patient is taking the dairy consumption or the uh, uh, consumption is adequate, it almost reduces the cardiovascular disease to the tune of almost 12%. Dietary fiber, dietary fiber, uh, basically they are uh, water soluble or insoluble, that should be encouraged. They have been shown that, that it is a beneficial effect on the cardiovascular disease risk factor. And, and uh, what we have seen that the cardiovascular disease incidents are less with the intake of the cardiovascular disease. And how do we how do we increase the uh, dietary fiber? The intake goal is it more than 14 gram per 1000 kilocalorie. Mostly it is 20 to 25 gram per day. And uh, how do we achieve that? The whole feed uh, flow should be used uh, used of bread, naan, rumali, roti, main, uh, the, all the stuff made, made from the maida should be avoided. Maida should be avoided. And the whole legume uh, should be used at least twice a week. And fruit should be used when uh, with the edible skin. And best to use the fresh raw fruits and enjoy the taking vegetable, which can be taken raw. For example, the salad. Salad is a very important source of the dietary uh, fibers. Regarding the fruits and vegetable, what we have seen that the fruits, vegetable in the in the in that uh, pure study, but we have seen that it was protective, and uh, it was protective. And what we have seen that the WHO recommends almost five servings of fruits and vegetable on a daily basis. But India, the per capita fruits and vegetable consumption is almost 140 grams per day, which is all less than two servings. Why it is so? Because of the high cost, perishability, and the lack of awareness 
uh, which are challenged faced by the individual and and what we should encourage is that the low cost fruits and vegetable whenever the possible and all fruits and vegetable inexpensive and locally produced have the same effect on the reduction of the cardiovascular disease and what we have seen that uh, if more than five servings versus less than five servings what they have what we have found that there is a consistent reduction in the stroke growth stroke uh, rate and this reduction is up to the tune of almost more than 26% more than five servings incidence of a stroke is reduced compared to the less than uh, uh, five servings per day regarding the fish ecological study cohort study and clinical study all have shown that the fish intake is productive especially in the high risk population against the coronary disease and ischemic stroke because they are very rich source of the omega 3 uh, uh, omega 3 fatty acids and other nutrients and we have the studies have shown that the e 20 g increase in the fish intake leads to the 7% reduction in the coronary heart disease mortality and but important to note that the fish oil supplement was not beneficial regarding the nuts nuts are basically un, they are very rich in the unsaturated fatty acid and they have protective effect and it was seen in the adventist heart study that they have protective effect with, and, and and they they show a favorable effect on the lipid profile because uh, they are low in the saturated fat diet and they but they have high calorie content so important to note when you are advising your nuts then you must watch for the calorie intake salt is an important aspect in the in the management of cardiovascular disease and what we have seen that <coughs> uh, regarding the uh, it has a direct relation with the with, with the blood pressure and what we have seen that uh, a reduction of 5 uh, mm systolic blood pressure and 2.7 mm of diastolic blood pressure can be achieved when we uh, when we uh, reduce the salt intake to less than 5 g per day and what we have seen that the most of the time in the hominid evolution it the, the it, it is it salt what salt was not being used and it was first manufactured almost 6000 years ago and uh, only few hundreds year ago it is being uh, it, it is being started in the mass Was the uh, uh, it, it was study for the intake of the salt of the different population. What they have it, it, it was very interesting study that what they have found in the Jano uh, Mami's tribe. What they have found is that they almost have a very less salt intake. Very uh, so very less salt intake. So they have very low sodium excretion, <clears throat> less than one gram per day. And their main systolic and diastolic blood pressure is almost ninety five millimeter mercury systolic and sixty one millimeter diastolic. and there was no cases of hypertension or obesity and bp levels do not elevate with the age in this tribe and <coughs> what they have found that uh, this 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 sodium excretion relates positively and so urine potassium excretion relates negatively to, to systolic blood pressure and there was this correlation was maintained even when the control with the with the age or the bmi so important to note in this trial there was very less salt intake and there was very less blood pressure which is not, which is not changing with the advancing the age what are the sources of salt salt uh, when you consuming the package or restaurant food 80% is hidden 10% is natural occurring only 10% is discretionary when you are having a self uh, homemade preparation or consumption only 10% is natural acne and 90% discretionary here you can see that you can change this 90% discretionary salt intake so uh, direct correlation of with the blood pressure has been found in the intrasalt study and that it was seen that uh, observational study study it was found that sodium chloride intake of 6 g per day could be associated with the average difference of blood pressure of 5 mm mercury in the age group of 15 to 19 years and 10 mm mercury in the age group of 60 to 69 years and we have seen that the if you decrease the salt intake to 6 g uh, per day that can lead to the fall of the systolic blood pressure of 
and dietary blood pressure of 3.8 millimeter of mercury. So salt is very important for the management of hypertension. And then it was seen that the, all the, this large number of meta-analysis has shown that the dietary salt reduction leads to decrease in the blood pressure. And this salt reduction also leads to the reduction in the, in the cardiovascular mortality as well as the morbidity. <clears throat> How do you uh, how do you ask the patient to change the salt intake? What can you ask the, the ask the patient to assess how much salt he is taking? So uh, what can you ask the you ask the patient to not to add any any salt in while cooking, and you should be placing the uh, salt on the table, and then you add salt and measure it. How much are you adding in twenty four hour? And you can suggest the alternatives such as the garlic, pepper, and other, other, other types of masala you can use, but less of salt. Uh, I will just uh, give you the importance of the food labeling because uh, food labeling is important. And uh, some uh, important aspect with that uh, breads, cereals, all the pickles, pepper, chutney, achar, they are all, all having a high level of salt. And uh, salt restriction, the, when you are, you are a labeling guide, when we use, they say that it's a low sodium, then it is put 140 milligram or less. If it is more than that, it is not a low sodium. And then you know all the rich source of the sodium. And uh, I'm not going into detail, but important to note, when you are reducing the salt intake from 12 gram per day to three gram per day, the, it reduces the risk of a stroke by one third and coronary heart disease by one fourth. So that is the important, that is the impact of the salt intake. And this intake, see, if you just reducing the one gram lower salt intake by the population, the risk of heart attack and stroke can be reduced by 4.8%. Just one gram lower salt intake. And in India, that can prevent almost 1.74 million death per annum. 1.74 million death per annum. Salt is very important in the patient of heart failure because there is a tendency to retain the salt and water. If there is an increase in the salt and water retention, their patient become more symptomatic. So in these type of the patients, so we have to, you have to restrict the salt intake. And, and it has been seen if their patient has a, a sudden increase in the salt intake, that leads to decompensation and sometimes leads to the pulmonary edema. So uh, if you're asking the patient to reduce to less than two gram, it is known as a mild sodium restriction. If it's less than one gram, <coughs> it is known as a moderate sodium restriction. And when in strict sodium restriction is known as a, when you advise the patient to reduce to less than 500 milligram of sodium chloride. And severe sodium restriction is uh, when you call it, uh, ask the patient to reduce less than 250 milligram uh, per day. So it, most of the time, you just ask to reduce mild, you ask for the mild sodium restriction. So a fluid requirement, uh, similarly, when in the patient of heart failure, you have to reduce uh, the fluid restriction and fluid restriction is usually advised when there is a overt volume overload, a severe decompensation, and when there is a, a, a serum sodium of less than 130 uh, milliequivalent per liter. So there you advise the fluid restriction. And the, Important to note that ask patient of heart failure to weigh every day. So if there is a sudden increase in the weight, it means that the, there is a fluid buildup. But there is a, some recent development on the dietary sodium intake. Uh, what it has shown that the, the pure study has shown there is a non-linear relation of sodium intake and the blood pressure. Uh, they, it, they have proposed some, some threshold above which is uh, sodium intake is harmful below which uh, uh, sodium intake is not playing much role. So there is a non-linear linear relationship, but sodium reduction, reduction is recommended in all patients of hypertension. So what about the potassium supplementation? Is It is important regarding the manage, in, in, in the management of hypertension, but they have shown that the increasing the potassium in, intake leads to the decrease in the blood pressure. We know that what is the risk source of the Sodium, uh, potassium, uh, basically all the citrus fruits, all the green leafy vegetables, 
and some of the pulses they have rich source of the potassium what about the dietary pattern this is important aspect we are just we have just discussed about the about the about the about the different component of the diet what about the diet itself there is a concept of the food matrix uh, this what is this which is a physical domain when within the food that interacts with its specific constituent nutrient of phytochemicals providing functionality and behavior which are very different from those exhibited by the component of in isolation or in a free state for example red meat red meat is a very rich source of the saturated fat intake saturated fat <clears throat> but in red meat unprocessed red meat has not shown to increase coronary heart disease dark chocolate dark chocolate is also a rich source of the saturated fat but that has not seen, shown to be uh, increasing the cardiovascular disease dairy products they have not shown to increase the uh, cardiovascular disease so some food matrix is playing there so what we have to choose that the red type of food is they are with when it is rich in fat low fiber content high glycemic index food they should be taken in very less amount sugar they should be taken in the very less amount yellow which can be taken in the moderation such as the moderate fats low fiber content and high glycemic foods and green foods which are healthy choice they should be taken uh, in plenty that such as the low in fat high fiber content and low glycemic index foods so uh, there are two dietary pattern which were uh, studied very uh, thoroughly uh, that is a dash that is a dietary approach to stop hypertension and mediterranean diet pattern i will just go uh, briefly about that the dash diet is high rich fruits uh, contains high fruits and vegetable low fat dairy products whole grain and nuts poultry and fish little red meat sweets sugar containing grains uh, reduced salt uh, so total and saturated fat reduced cholesterol uh, so low salt high fiber and high in calcium magnesium what they have shown patient who are taking uh das type of diet they have uh, these patients almost 450 patient were selected and they these patient were having a uh, mild to moderate hypertension stage 1 or stage 2 hypertension but they have found that with the, the with das type there was reduction in systolic blood pressure as well as the diastolic blood pressure and in and uh, what Uh, they have also found the the relation with the sodium intake. The relation with the sodium. If the patient is having high intake of sodium, this difference in the blood pressure was much more compared to the patient who are taking less sodium. Meaning by dash diet is much helpful when the patient is having high sodium intake. But dash diet was causing decrease in the systolic blood pressure. Another diet was which was studies was the Mediterranean diet. uh what it is it is a lots of fruits vegetable bread grains beans nuts and seeds olive oil is a was the main source of the fat dairy product fish and poultry was used little red meat and wine in moderation it was studied in the lion heart study what they have found <coughs> there is a reduction in the cardiovascular disease when the patient is was taking uh high uh, patient was adhering to the mediterranean type of diet high adherence leads to the almost uh, almost uh, reduction of 22% reduction in the uh, cardiovascular disease and the fatal cardiovascular disease was redu uh, reduced to almost almost 40% when the patient was adherent to the mediterranean diet uh, less adherent was having less effect but patient who are adherent to the mediterranean diet they were having marked reduction in the cardiovascular disease incidence as well as the cardiovascular disease mortality and then it was shown that the uh, primary endpoint combining of the acute myocardial infarction and stroke and death from the cardiovascular disease it was reduced by the mediterranean diet when <coughs> a mediterranean diet with the nuts and mediterranean diet with the uh, 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 virgin olive oil they have shown reduction in the cardiovascular event rate even the total mortality was reduced but it was not statistically significant what is the our indian equivalent for the mediterranean diet regarding the oil in the mediterranean diet olive oil was used in the indian diet uh, indian vegetarian diet mostly the ground nut or the mustard oil is used what we should be advise use a mixture of oil and and try to rotate the oil in cooking that is more beneficial if you are not <clears throat> patient is not able to rotate what can you uh, ask the patient 
uh, one month you can take safola uh, so sorry safflower another month you can say sunflower another month you can take canola and mustard oil can be used as and when required try to avoid any hydrogenated oil regarding the protein uh, intake in the mediterranean diet it was the source was the fish seafoods chicken and legumes less red meat in the indian diet basically it, it comes mixed basically from the legumes and pulses and less from the non vegetarian diet <coughs> what we should be advising them is that uh, locally available fish should be consumed and person taking uh, chicken uh, should be encouraged to continue to take and uh, chicken and a rich source of protein such as the uh, uh, paneer uh, or soya beans and pulses and legumes should be uh, and correct and egg is a reference protein and should be advised regarding the uh, source of omega 3 fatty acid they were having fatty fish what we are having commonly is the mustard oil the mustard oil is, is having a short chain fatty acids in indian diet and we can we can we can advise that the flax seed that is alsi oil uh, is a good source and can be used and, and should be encouraged to be used in indian cooking the carbohydrate intake their source was the whole grain complex carbohydrate and more fibers we indian are using mostly as a refined oil uh, refined cereals and we should be encouraging the patient or uh, or any individual to use unrefined cereals avoid processed and refined carbohydrate regarding the dairy products they have a low consumption of dairy product but uh, the good part is that we are having a frequent user of the dairy and beverages and desserts and we should be encouraging that the liberal use of dairy products or in beverages and desserts should be encouraged and cheese and yogurt should be advised regarding the fruits and vegetable we indian have a very less consumption of the fruits and vegetable and that is the area we, we should be encouraging with low cost locally available fruits and vegetable should be encouraged and with the emphasis that it has a protective role in the uh, in, in the cardiovascular disease regarding the wine uh, most of the time we are consuming the hard liquor i will discuss a little bit more about the wine or alcohol uh, this is a who recommendation we all know but important to note that the fruits and vegetable more than five servings per day one serving is equal to 100 g meaning by per day 500 g fruits and vegetable should be consumed important to note it doesn't contain starchy food food uh, start start the vegetable aloo not vegetable plate model uh, regarding the ion from the ion ion uh, portion uh, size and what should be the portion uh, the carbohydrate intake should be from the cereal and millets it should be 10 to 15 uh, cere- uh, portion and uh, per portion size is almost 30 g meaning by <coughs> roti uh, etc uh, 30 g uh, portion size and then uh, fruits and vegetable we already discussed more than five servings 500 g per portion and the pulse and dairy it should be more than two to three portion per day uh, regarding the pulses the per portion is 30 g meaning by 60 to 90 g per day and dairy product if you consider that the 100 g per portion if you see that the uh, fats and sugar four to six portion each and uh, it should be uh, for the fats it's 5 g is considered as one portion and the sugar it 5 g is considered as one portion regarding the alcohol if you see that uh, there are various uh, definition low drinker less than 5 g per day moderate drinker 5 to 30 and heavy drinker 30 to 90 and the recommendation is the acc ha recommendation is the moderate drinking can be allowed less than two drinks per day or less than one drink per day in women the important to note that most of the time we are having a binge drinking what is binge drinking the pattern of alcohol consumption that achieve blood alcohol concentration to the tune of 0.08% which usually correspond to four drinks on a single occasion for a man and more than three drinks for a woman with when taken within two hours and most of the time this is the pattern of drinking in indian scenario so already discussed less than 14 units per week less than 7 units per week by american society of hypertension uh, guideline and one alcohol intake is almost 
equal to 10 ml of pure alcohol or 8 gram of pure alcohol, which is almost equivalent to 25 ml of single measure of whiskey. That is one small pack or a third of pint of beer or half of a standard of glass of red wine. That is, so you a man can have a two small pack, but now comes the important issue. <clears throat> but we have seen that the, it has a direct correlation with the increase in the blood pressure. And if a meta analysis has shown there is a, uh, if you, if you uh, uh, decrease the alcohol intake, there is will be a decrease in the systolic blood pressure of three millimeter mercury and diastolic blood pressure more than two millimeter mercury. And alcohol consumption has been shown, it has an almost J-shaped curve. Moderation, it was found to be a little helpful, but in uh, increasing the consumption, it was found to be a very, very harmful effect. But important to note in Indian scenario, this is not holding true. In the inter-heart study, which in the, uh, it, it, uh, this study was, uh, it, it had it studied the first occurrence of myocardial infarction. What are the risk factor for those myocardial infarction? In the South Asia, in the, in the European population, the alcohol consumption with the relation to first incidence of myocardial infarction, alcohol consumption was found to be productive. In the Middle East, East, it was not having any effect. In the African population, it was not having any effect, but somehow it was trending towards beneficial. In the, but in China, it was found to be a little beneficial, but in South Asia, which includes India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, it was found to be harmful. There was almost, almost one, 40% increased chances of first myocardial infarction when patient was having alcohol, regular alcohol intake. And then it was it was a sentinel surveillance uh, study, and uh, uh, it was a it was a cross sectional survey study, and which has uh, included the employees and their family member of 20 to uh, 69 years of uh, age and almost 20,000 population. And uh, HAL was the Lucknow industry which was uh, studied and what they have found when the patient is having alcohol use they were having higher blood pressure significantly higher blood pressure compared to the patient who are not using and in this study it was found occasional alcohol intake was also having increased chances of uh, was not significant but there was some trend towards increased chances of having chronic heart disease Regular user were having almost 60% more chances of coronary, uh, coronary heart disease. And the past user, usually they were having, uh, they were advised to stop alcohol intake. They, so they were known as the past user. They were almost having 2.1 times higher chances of having coronary heart disease compared to the non-user. And when you see that the local spread versus the branded spread, the branded spread have a lower uh, increase in the coronary heart disease incidence compared to the uh, local spreads. So it was a linear relation with the use of alcohol. If you see that the tobacco and alcohol combination, <coughs> combining tobacco and alcohol, it was an additive effect, or rather you can say the synergistic effect in causing uh, uh, incidence of coronary heart disease. So key message to advice for alcohol consumption, binging is definitely harmful. Don't tell anyone that moderate amount of alcohol is good. Alcohol has no role in coronary heart disease prevention in Indian population. Patients who do not consume alcohol should be advised not to start. And those who consume alcohol should be advised to stop. So still awake. So key message for diet for prevention of card cardiovascular disease. You should be reducing the card carbohydrate intake, move from nutrient to whole food, increase serving of non-starchy fruits and vegetables, preferably raw and lightly cooked, decrease salt intake, especially if individual has a hypertension, avoid high salt in cooking and on table, avoid food with the high salt content, portion size should be emphasized and consume in moderation, saturated fat consumption should match the physical activity of the individual and minimize the reuse of oil. So that is all from my lecture. So any question from this presentation?